The proposal to have data centres in Clare came up in 2018 at the Economic Policy Committee and it was considered the way to go, that that's where industry was going to be and there was a big drive to bring data centres to Ireland and I think local authorities were all vying for having the data centre in their area because it meant they could make money. And while I think our local authorities deserve money, it's not necessarily the best way to go just to have data centres all over the country. So in 2018 there was a consultation to amend the county development plan and to rezone some land. That happened, we were told it would be data centre. Some of us said yes, let's have data centre as long as it's renewable energy powering it. We didn't realise to the extent that they were going to be needing power and, and growing and, and at that stage we were looking into that. And then three years later we're proposed a massive power plant and a data centre beside it. So it's a completely different scenario to what we were sold at the start. Back then we had no idea what was actually physically proposed for the area. So that proposal has only come up in the last few months and the consultation on that has been absolutely abysmal. There was hardly any outreach and I don't think the people of Venice really know what's proposed on their back door. It's a power plant and I think that wasn't what we were sold in the first place and then when the planning permission came through it's a completely different thing to what we were talking about in 2018. This seems to be a new tactic is to build a power plant with the data centre. The energy regulator and AirGrid are both concerned about the use of energy from the grid for data centres so they're just bringing in their own power plants. If that's what they're going to be let to do every time they build a data centre <laughs> you're just talking about increasing fossil fuel use. So the Ennis one is only one of 115 data centres that is either in use, being constructed or in planning at the moment in Ireland. They're stating in their planning application that they need 200 megawatts of power, that 80 would come from the grid, which would be 50% gas generated. The other 120 megawatts would be generated by fossil gas. They said that in the future it would be greener because they would be using hydrogen. But I've recently read that making hydrogen from fossil fuel, from gas, is 20% worse than gas itself because it's yet another process, so more methane leakage. The emissions stated in the planning application is 6,570,000 ,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. That makes it the 12th largest polluter in Ireland. Each of the six data centres that are proposed have 11 diesel backups for themselves. So we're looking at 66 diesel generators for the data centres and 18 backup or dual fuel generators for the gas power plant. People have made us aware of the emissions from the gas power plant. Locally, you would have nitrogen oxide carbon dioxide, huge amounts of methane and particulate matter. And the EPA have shown reports about power plants in Dublin and although they say that the levels are acceptable, it's questionable if the people around the power plants are safe. We're pushing it to the max with data centres for no real apparent benefit. We're not getting lots of tax for the state because of it. There's not loads of jobs once they're operation. There's a few for construction at the start. So it's not clear what the benefit is when the state is supposed to build all this infrastructure and new gas power plants and it's threatening blackouts for society. We're talking about trying to reduce our emissions 7% annually, but like in the last month there's been an application for in a data centre which is going to increase it by 1% on our current emissions. There's the Shannon LNG gas proposal, which is another 1.6% of our gas emissions. So it's totally logical. We're going to have to challenge this concept of continual growth. There's 70 data centres operational in Ireland at the moment. That's 900 megawatts demand. There's another about 255 megawatts that's being built at the moment. Data centres, they're powered with electricity and that usually comes from either the grid or from on-site generation gas boilers and then back up diesel generators too, which would be turned on occasionally to make sure they're working. So this increase in data centres will automatically call for expanding our fossil fuel consumption. Gas Networks Ireland, they're projecting a 23% gas demand increase by the end of the decade. We can't do this and decrease our emissions 7% a year. It doesn't make sense. So we're very concerned that the energy that will be expected to be imported for the data centres in Ireland would be coming from Shannon LNG. We knew from the previous application that it was coming from Pennsylvania, so it would be fracked gas. 
Professor Robert Howarth from Cornell University in the United States told the Oireachtas Committee on Climate Change back in 2019 that the carbon footprint of fracked gas from the US would be 44% higher than burning coal in Money Point. So again, we're increasing emissions instead of decreasing them, but we keep being told that gas is cleaner and it's not. Ennis Data Centre, like a lot of the other data centres proposed in Ireland, has a huge gas plant attached because the grid can't provide the energy that's needed for these huge data centres. Because the one in Ennis with a demand for 200 megawatts is the equivalent of 210,000 houses. So that's like all the houses in Clare, Limerick and Kerry put together. They also want to make that strategic infrastructure so that it will be fast tracked through on board Planola, just like the power plants are being done. So that means like the public has much less say and it's more difficult to appeal it and to challenge it in court. But they're saying that, yeah, we have to have this industry so that the economy can continue to grow. And they don't seem to see that it is having a massive impact on any kind of chance that we will become self-sufficient for energy via renewables. We have the rights under the Airhouse Convention to be informed of anything that will affect our environment and to be involved in the decision-making process. We were not given that right in 2018 and we're still not being given that right. We need to stop what we're doing on data centres. We need to go back to the people of Ireland and that's what we should be lobbying for. A national conversation on where we're going with data centres and what we want as a country to happen. It shouldn't be about industry running the show on this because it's such a headache for Airgrid and for the energy regulator that we should all be worried about where the politicians and the industries are leading us. So I think that people need to start campaigning on it in their local areas because at the moment a lot of the data centres are focused around Dublin but the policy seems to be to shift them out of there now very lately because it's causing such problems on the electrical grid around Dublin. I'd say get involved and if you're trying to argue against fossil fuel expansion you need to be arguing against data centre expansion you know. We saw with COVID that people resent when they see sectors not being dealt with equally and that's what we're seeing here. Big tech being given a total free ride while other sectors are going to be hammered in the near future. An idea that we're not all in this together when you see this kind of inequality. It's been allowed to happen with privacy with, with big tech and now they're being allowed to do it with demand as well that they can just keep on increasing data and that there's no limits to the growth in data. We're going to have to start dealing with that. Maybe that's on an EU level or a global level. Ireland was fighting against coming together on a global tax policy. This all feeds into the same reasoning as why we've allowed the data centres to just expand and expand as they wish. It's this subservience to corporate power. We're going to have to deal with it or it's going to have big implications both for our emissions and in potential blackouts on the national grid.